Hey friends, it's Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornments Decor, and I'm going to start all over because I missed some of you guys um, a few minutes ago. My Facebook Live cut out again. But anyways, I am just back from the business boutique, and I'm filled to the brim with all of this stuff that we have learned over the past few days. And so I'm so excited to share some of this with you. Um, it was just on my mind. It actually, um, I just had to like write it down on paper. So I've got some notes. If you see me looking down, that's what I'm looking at. But we were at a business boutique conference. And if you've never heard of the business boutique conference, it's put on by Dave Ramsey's corporation. And um, the woman in charge of it, her name is Christy Wright. She's a Dave Ramsey personality. And uh, she is a very smart businesswoman. She started out as a small businesswoman herself. Her mother was a small businesswoman. And so she designed this conference for women who are entrepreneurs. And um, we, this was my first time going to the event. And there were over 3,000 women at this event. And every one of them either have a dream of having a business, they already have an idea of the business, or they've already started their business. Hi, Holly. Y'all come in and say hello. Facebook dropped me just a minute ago. So I'm kind of trying to start over so that you know, people watching on replay won't be lost as to what we were talking about. But anyways, um, to make a long story short, uh, Christy Wright gave us a challenge at the event to write a letter to someone else at the event. Not someone in particular, someone anonymous. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Linda. <laughs> hey, I think it's Jay. I'm not sure how to say your name. I'm sorry. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Shannon. Um, but anyway, she challenged us to write a letter to someone anonymous. And so um, she wanted this letter to be something that they could look back at later and they could um, be encouraged by it if they're feeling down. Hey, Randy. Hey, Becky and Irene. Um, and they wanted, she wanted you to like write it as if you're writing to like a best friend and they need a pick me up, right? Thank you, Andrea. I'm still wearing my cute duds from, from the event. So before I took off all my jewelry and got like in my comfy PJs, I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this live because it's on my mind and I couldn't wait to tell you guys. <laughs> hey, Cindy. Okay. So anyways, Christy challenged us to write a letter. And so it got really silent in a room full of 3000 women. That's a feat in and of itself. We all got really quiet and she said, okay, I want you to take the next three minutes and write this letter. And so these little slips of paper were inside of our little business boutique journals. See there business boutique. And, um, she told us to just write a letter to someone. And so, um, I'm going to read you guys the letter that I wrote. And, um, well, actually, I'm not going to read you guys the letter I wrote just yet. I wrote this letter thinking that, okay, it's going to go to a woman that's anonymous in this audience. And I want to, like, lift her up. I want her to know that, you know, no matter the struggles she's faced, she can pick herself back up and she can keep moving forward, right? So we all spent about three minutes writing this letter. And it was very serious. And she said, okay, if you haven't finished your letter, you can finish it, you know, in a few minutes. And we'll talk about those later. So fast forward to... Um, this was about two hours later, right? And she's like, okay, y'all remember those letters you wrote? Take them out. And so we think that we're all going to like trade with somebody that we don't know sitting next to us. And she said, what you all didn't know is that that letter that you all wrote to, to someone anonymous in the crowd, you wrote to yourself. So in the part where it says, dear blank, I want you to put your name. And at first I'm like, well, that's disappointing. Like, nobody else is going to read this but me, and I put a lot of thought into this. And then she said, I want you to read this letter to yourself. I'm hoping I won't get emotional because we all started bawling when she said this part. She said, I want you to read this letter to yourself, and I want you to take it as words from God written to you. Because she said, those came from your heart, and those words came from God. And they were supposed to be written to someone else, but you wrote them. You didn't know it, but you were writing them to yourself. So, before I get all emotional, let's see if I can get through reading my letter to you guys of what I wrote. Dear friend, you are going to leave Business Boutique feeling full to the brim with ideas and inspiration. I want you to know now more than ever. Or I want you to now more than ever take action. Don't let months go by before you try something new. Even if you're afraid you'll fail, go for it. You will never truly know the impact your business or ideas can have on the world. However, God will know. There is a reward for those that diligently seek him. Even if you don't believe in yourself, God believes in you. Don't do big things. Shake things up and knock it out of the park. 
Love, Tamara. And so I couldn't even finish reading the letter to myself. I mean, I'm, I'm like getting a little misty right now, but I'm holding it together because I've done read it like twice already. <laughs> and so, yeah, it, it made a big impact knowing that I can take that advice myself. Uh, you know, it says to try things new. I'm getting ready to have an event in March. March, mark your calendars. March 21st through the 23rd. I'm going to have a three-day event in Nashville, Tennessee myself. And um, it's going to be called Southern Adornments Live. We are not selling tickets yet, but we will be starting during Black Friday week. And, oh, Betty, don't cry. Um, yes, Lisa, they are powerful. Especially knowing, like she said, that God put those words in my heart. You know, and that really is what got me bawling like a baby. Um, so... You know, the thing I'm going to be trying that's new is I'm going to be hosting an event for 150 women. And that terrifies me. Truly terrifies me. But uh, there's a few things that I also learned that I want to share with you guys. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the event as well while I talk about these. So I've got three things to share with you. Number one, I want you to talk to yourself like you would to someone you love. Just like in that letter. I never would have said those words to myself but I would have easily said them to a friend who was struggling. So maybe if you need some encouragement yourself, you should write a letter to a friend and then read it back to yourself as if it's writing to yourself, just like we did today. Because that letter meant more to me. <laughs> yes, Lisa from Be Still Farms Joy was there. We all started crying, didn't we, girl? Uh, so I want you to talk like don't don't complain to yourself or don't talk down to yourself and I know a lot of times we talk about our struggles and it's okay to talk about our struggles but sometimes we need to talk about our successes and we need to encourage ourselves and we need to show ourselves some love just like we would a best friend yes Ashley it's wonderful isn't it today's been discouraging one for you oh Ashley I'm gonna be crying with you if you don't stop it so number two I'm going to move on. Number two, I want you to do it scared. Uh, this, Christy actually talked for a good 45 minutes to us about doing it scared. And I'm going to open up to my section where I wrote a few notes. Uh, one of the things she said was that fear establishes limits on your life. And I wrote down, she said, faith and fear require you to believe in something that hasn't even happened yet. So faith and fear require you to believe in something that hasn't even happened yet. How powerful is that? We have to have faith in God and have faith that he is going to provide heaven for us one day. And we don't know that yet. We, I mean, we don't know for sure because it hasn't happened yet, right? So we have to have fear in the, faith in that. But we also have to have a fear that heaven is, that hell is real also. And that hasn't happened yet either. So that, you know, there's two sides to that coin. But if you apply this to business or creativity, we have to have faith that what we're painting is going to turn out amazing and someone's going to buy it. Or we have to shove aside that fear that nobody's going to buy it. Because that hasn't happened yet either. So anytime you're feeling fear for putting out your creativity in the world or starting your own business... Just remember that you also have to have faith in something that hasn't happened yet. That's the whole, is the glass half full or half empty kind of thing. I'm a glass half full kind of girl. I like to believe in the optimism and the good things that are going to happen. And so I, I choose daily to choose faith over fear. Um, and just remember that everyone starts somewhere and so will you. That was something else they said at the event. Everyone starts somewhere and so will you. Uh, you know, I didn't just wake up one morning and have 35,000 Facebook fans. I started at zero, just like you. Actually, back in January, I still only had 7,000. So, I mean, in a year, not even a year's time, look how far it has grown. And it's just, it's amazing the things that God can do in your life. That's exactly right, Sharon. Trust in God and he will move us, he will bring us through it. Tess, you just joined... Are you doing an event yourself? Yes, I'm doing an event March 21st to the 23rd. It's going to be in Nashville. And we're going to be doing a little bit of business, but we're also going to be doing a lot of painting and crafting. And it's going to be so fun to be with so many women who love the same thing that I do and that you do. So I hope you guys will buy a ticket when we start to put them up for sale. So look for that at the end of the month. But number three, I don't want to get off track here. Number three, 
You are to embrace your gifts that God has given you. The most powerful thing, that one of the most powerful things, Christy said a lot of powerful things, and so did so many other women, but one of the most powerful things she said was she told us about a gift that she was given, I think it was for her birthday, and it was a picture of a dog like hers. She has a, a very rare breed of dog, and when she opened the present, she was like, oh, how wonderful. It's a picture that looks like my dog, but she thought that it was just like, you know, a print that someone had found like on Etsy or something like that and given her. And so she was like, oh, thank you. This is wonderful. And she set it aside. Well, later, after everyone left, her husband said, well, Christy, didn't you like the picture of the dog that, you know, my mother gave you? And she's like, yeah, it was beautiful. And she said, you know, she, she drew that for you. She painted, I don't know if it was paint. I think it was more like um, colored pencils or something. But she, her mother had like drawn that picture for her and Christy picked it up and tears came to her eyes and she said well no wonder it looks exactly like I forgot the name of her dog but she you know it looked exactly like her dog and she said how precious this gift now is to me knowing that it was made for me by someone who loves me and she said I wanted to hang it up in the middle of my living room for the whole world to see because I was so proud of it she said in the same way you need to think of your creativity your painting skills, your sewing skills, your ability to sing or cook or do whatever it is you are good at as a gift from God. And then she said, how differently would you look at your gifts if you knew they came from a God that loves you and created them just for you? So don't hide your gifts. Don't tuck them away and not share them with the world. Don't be embarrassed about them. Don't don't keep them to yourself. It's just like the parable of the talents in the Bible. God said that we are to use our talents and they will multiply, but they're not going to multiply if we bury them in the sand, are they? So, I just I wanted to encourage you all from all we've just it, we've had so much encouragement poured into us over the past 3 days that I wanted to pour it into you as soon as I got home while I was fresh on my mind. And I want you to remember to talk to yourself like you are talking to someone you love. Whatever it is you're wanting to do, do it scared. Because you're not going to be confident off the bat. You need to just fake it until you feel it. Fake it until you feel confident. Because eventually, after doing those hard things, you will earn that confidence. And number three, I want you to embrace your gifts. Whatever it is God has given you, embrace it and share it with others. Don't hide it in the sand. And if you know someone who needs to hear this, who may be hiding their gifts or may be starting out small in business and might need a little encouragement, please share this. Share this with them. Uh, even tag them if you want them to directly see it. Or if you just know several people who could use it, just share it straight to your page and just say, I knew some of you guys would appreciate this. So I hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday evening. And don't forget to roll back your clocks because it is daylight savings time. So we get an extra hour of sleep tonight. Woohoo! All right, so I will see you guys later. Y'all enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.